Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is my early review of set 71799, the Ninjago City Markets from, of course, the LEGO Ninjago theme. This set contains 6,163 pieces, 21 minifigures, and will retail for $369.99 in the US. This set is not officially released until June 1st, 2023, but it was sent to me early by the LEGO group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm doing early reviews of all of the summer 2023 LEGO Ninjago sets as well as early reviews of other themes such as LEGO City and LEGO Monkey Kid, and lots of other exciting stuff down the line. So if any of that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, by liking this video and subscribing to the channel, it'll help put my videos in your feed as soon as they're posted and also really help support me and the channel. But with all that being said, let's get on to this review. So here's the Ninjago City Markets, and this set is an absolute beast. It is massive. In terms of width, it's double the size of the Ninjago City Gardens. Obviously, it's not built to be as full as that set, but yeah, this is two full base plates that make this up, which is super cool. It almost seems seems like it's meant to be a centerpiece for Ninjago City. Kind of makes me feel like they forgot about the Ninjago City docks because that's kind of what that was. If you're curious how this set connects to the other three Ninjago City sets, I'll be making a separate video later today covering all that. But yeah, the point of this video is to review just what you get in this set, and there's a lot here. So now that I've given you a chance to take it all in and see the set in its entirety, let's move the camera in a little bit closer so that way you can see all the intricate little details in this build. And there's a lot. Lots of little references to Ninjago, to Lego, and even like some little inside jokes I didn't expect. So yeah, let's get started. So we'll start here on the left side of the build. Of course you can see there's this little stairway that connects it to the other Ninjago City sets. It raises up a little bit because the base level of the city is actually a little bit lower than the rest. So there's stairs on this side and a ramp on the other side which you'll see in a moment. But then there's also like this little alleyway around the side and this is actually really neat. A lot of the Ninjago City sets don't do this but it very much seems like they wanted to make sure the set looked good from all angles. So even though it does still connect with the other Ninjago City sets it's not just completely flat on the side. Rather there's some open space right here with some studs to pose figures and you can see these sides of these buildings are fully decorated. There's a few little flower beds in them, and a lime green frog sitting on these boxes right here. Speaking of that lime green frog, he comes in quite a few places in this set. I think you get a total of four. So that's a very fun inclusion. Lego designers obviously love frogs. They come in so many sets. But yeah, they include quite a few in this one. Anyway, yeah, you can see we have our first few buildings right here, and they actually did something really cool with the buildings in this set that they didn't do with previous Ninjago City sets. Because in the past with Ninjago City sets, if you want to actually look inside the buildings, you had to take the entire thing apart. Especially for these ones on the bottom floors, you'd have to remove two floors above of it. That's not exactly the case with this set though. So to start off we have like this little bakery right here and if we want to look inside we can simply just pull the room out like this. And I mean this is even just kind of cute to display on its own but it's just a tiny little part of a bakery. You can see there's lots of different baked goods right here, a rolling pin, a white croissant I guess implying that this hasn't been cooked yet, a little dough ball, there's two pretzels on a stick, and then two large baguettes in this bin. There's an oven in the back where you can see those croissants are being cooked, and a giant paddle piece which I guess you could imagine the baker getting the croissants out of the oven with that. And there's a look at the oven from the back. You can see there's a trans orange piece to represent fire, and one of the minion hair pieces, maybe to represent something that's burnt. That piece is also used pretty commonly in this set, which I still find super funny that a hair piece for the minions is used in so many sets. But yeah, I mean, it works well. Anyway, then on top of the oven, there's these stairs leading to an upper level, and these stairs are actually a pretty cool part. I hadn't seen it before, so I thought it was all new, but it turns out these are actually from Lego Harry Potter, and these are wand box pieces, so a Lego wand does fit in there but they just use them as textured stairs in this set, and I think that works pretty well. I don't think that's too common of a part, so it's nice to see it in another theme, because yeah, that's my first time getting it. And then yeah, you can see this is where the bakery slides back in. There's some basic texturing in there, but there's not a ton going on, and it's very easy to just put the building back together like this. Now, of course, there were stairs there, and that's of course because they lead to this upstairs area, and we can of course remove this as well. And this looks to be a little apartment. There's some roller skates and a shelf right here, a little bedside table with a lamp on it. The lamp piece is actually an unprinted version of the LEGO Minecraft Alley head, which they have done similar things in the past for lamps, but still always very cool to see. This isn't even the only like Minecraft exclusive part that they brought over into this set, and the other one in the set is even cooler, but still I think it's neat that they use that here, and it works pretty well. It gives a very unique look. This bed says the word relax and in jargon on it. That's of course a stickered piece, and you can see there's another stickered piece on the wall, and it looks like it has a picture of Nia on it, and I was racking my brain and I can't think of what this is meant to be a reference to. Like maybe it is just a picture of Nia, though she has a red headband, which I don't know if she ever had in the show. She's always worn blue or silver. And I think this is just meant to be the baker's apartment, so I don't know why the baker has a picture of Neon on her wall. Maybe she's just a fan of her? Or maybe this is a specific reference that I'm just not recognizing? Or wait, actually, hold on. <laughs> I was wondering what the pattern in the back is. 
Is that a cookie? A chocolate chip cookie? And maybe this is supposed to be a nod towards the that's how the cookie crumbles line from Seabound? And that's how it ties into the baker because cookies? I don't know, that's my best guess. If you guys have any better theories, let me know in the comments. And that's most of what there is to this room. I do like the design for windows on the walls. They're like the classic Lego fence pieces in brown but turned on their sides. And I think they make for great shutters. And here's a look at how the bedroom area looks when it's removed. You can see there's a hole right here and this is where the stairs actually come up. And then this hole on the other side is covered up by the floor. But yeah, you just slide it back in like this. You can see this piece sort of falls out of place every now and then, but it's not too difficult to fix. And then next to the bakery in the apartment, you can see there's a little alleyway right here. And this leads to our next building, and that's of course Kai's blacksmith shop. And it's pretty cool to see a blacksmith shop for Kai in a set. Now it is very different from the four weapons blacksmith shop that we saw in the show, but still neat to get nonetheless. And it doesn't necessarily have to be for Kai. You can just use it for another character if you prefer. But yeah, very simple. Just lots of room in there to post figures. I like how the one wall is kind of slanted to add some nice shape to it. It looks like there's a big oven right here. There's some tools in the back wall, specifically a ski pole and a wrench. Then on the ground, there's an anvil, a bucket of water, and then a ladder, which leads up to the next floor. However, we're not gonna take a look at the next floor just yet because we can get better access to it later. For now though, here's a look at the river on this side. You can see the water wraps all the way around this set, which is really nice to see. But now turning back around to the front. Here we have all the foliage, which is pretty standard in Ninjago City sets. I have to say the foliage is always my least favorite part of these sets because while it looks good, these are the easiest pieces to knock off. You'll see when I do my video combining on the set, Sets. But yeah, on my older sets, these pieces fall off all the time, and honestly, I kind of forget where they all go. I wish there was a better way to connect them where they weren't so loose, but I really don't think there is. They did mix things up a little bit this time around by adding in these lime green teeth pieces as well as the lime green katanas. It kind of matches what they did with the Ninjago City Gardens where we got a weapon pack in bright green. But yeah, I believe this is the first set to use these exact pieces. Really unique design for this pillar right here too. This is another part that's unfortunately pretty fragile, but I do quite like the look of it at least. On the side of the bakery, you can see there's a stickered illustration and you can see it's of this man fighting a dragon and there's a little bit of Ninjago down there and that just simply says the word art, which I guess, yeah, is an apt descriptor that is certainly a piece of art. It's a cool sticker though. Again, I don't think it's referencing anything specific from Ninjago. I think it's just meant to look cool. Like I suppose that could be Sensei Wu or the first Fujitsu Master, and it looks like he's holding Lloyd's sword with a tassel on it, but yeah, I don't think this is any specific event. If I'm wrong though, feel free to correct me. Now moving outside into the main area, here you can see what the other side of the bakery looks like. They use a door piece on its side right here, and that's like a little window to get access into the bakery, so if you want a character to walk up here and place an order, you can have the baker minifigure standing inside, and that way they can interact with each other. And there's a stickered piece on the side of the bakery, which has a picture of a pie and some more text written in, in jargon, and the text here says Snowberry Pie, and it looks like the pie itself's made of snow. Again, that's another one where I don't know if that's a specific reference to something, but if it is, I'm not getting it. I promise I do know a lot of the references in this set, just not the first few we've come across. But yeah, if there's any more to that that I'm not getting, feel free to add it in the comments. And then finally, you can see there's a tiny little roof on the bakery, and this is a pretty creative part that they use. This is the, like, bottom cover piece for, like, minifigure book accessories. Like, normally you attach a top cover above that, but obviously those aren't here. And yeah, I think that adds a really unique texture. Ninjago City sets love using parts in unique ways, and I mean, you can see that very clearly in a lot of places in this set. But yeah, that's definitely a very clear example. Speaking of, here's another really creative parts use. This is the other side of the apartment above the bakery. You can see there's more of those plant pots hanging on the outside. And I actually forgot to mention this before, but the pots that the plants are in, those are actually the skirt pieces from Lego Trolls, though turned upside down. They did something very similar in the Ninjago City Gardens, though I believe it was a different colored pot. I think it was teal instead of black, but I thought that was really creative in that set, and it's cool to see them do it again. But the really interesting thing here is there's a lamp that's hanging down. This is meant to be like a little street lamp, and it's cute, but that piece at the bottom, that's a hot dog bun. And I guess that works? <laughs> Definitely very silly, but being completely honest, I do have a bit of a tough time seeing that as anything aside from a hot dog bun, so maybe they went a little too silly with this one, but of course it's a Lego. If you don't like it, you can always customize it. I like that it's here at the very least. I think it's fun. But yeah, this ring piece here actually isn't connected at all. It just sort of hangs there loosely. So yeah, you can swing it around just like this, which is actually pretty fun. Then here's the exterior outside Kai's blacksmith shop. You can see there's a giant sign at the top that just says the word blacksmith. Again, that's a sticker. Unless it's specifically mentioned that something's a print. If you see a design in the set, most likely it is a sticker. But yeah, that just says the word blacksmith. And you can see there's like some fire erupting from the sides. Then I apologize, it's a bit hard to get my phone in here. But you can see there's a sign above the alleyway that we looked at before. And that has the letters N, C, and G. And then below that, there's another stickered piece with a picture of a hammer and some fire coming up. And that says the word open in jargon. Not sure what NCG is. Maybe it's like the initials, one of the designers. Or again, maybe it's just something I'm not catching. And then finally for the blacksmith shop, there's one more poster hanging around the outside. And this one you can see has a picture of Hound Dog McBrog on it. And 
in the jargon it says NJTV McBrog. So I assume this is implying Hound Dog McBrog got his own TV show or something, which is kind of a funny idea. I hope they explore that in Dragons Rising. That'd actually be a pretty funny place to take that character. But now moving on, we can take a look at this beautiful little bit of the river right here. You can see, of course, there's this giant bridge going over top of it, and I love the shaping on this. Lots of really cool parts used. Like, for example, these discs in the center, these are unprinted shield pieces, what they use for like Captain America, but also just regular Lego shields. There's like Lego Star Wars BB-8 heads in red topping off the ends, and then these red tentacle pieces just to add some texture. They use these large rounded pieces too, which I can only assume are from Lego Technic, because yeah, I've never really seen them before. I assume maybe in the big Technic sets those would go around a wheel or something, but that makes the shape look even more unique, considering something we don't see in system all too often. And yeah, it looks great. I love how everything's at an angle too. When you build Lego, it's obviously on a bit of a grid, so whenever a set breaks that grid, especially in a significant manner like this, it's always really impressive, and yeah, I think it works perfectly. And the water here is, of course, done very similarly to previous Ninjago City sets. You can see there's different colored plates underneath that give the illusion of depth, so by the shores it's more green, and then transitions to dark green, and then it just turns into black. And then there's little bits of foliage growing all throughout. There's a few of these little flowering plants, which the first two Ninjago Cities did not have, but the Ninjago City markets did, so it's cool to see they brought them back. And then behind the bridge, you can see there's a minifigure on a little boat, and he's got all these different little plants that he's selling. So I guess he's meant to be like a little water market. This boat can be removed, of course, so I'm going to do just that so we take a look at it up a little bit closer. But with it removed, there's a look at the backside of the lake. You can see the boat attaches on this jumper piece right here, which that's something that previous Ninjago City sets have not used on their water, because I believe those pieces in Transparent are all new for like last year, like the Minecraft sets started using them. So it's cool to see them bring it over here, and it does help the boat feel like a more important part of the build. And then here's a look at the boat up a little bit closer, and it's a very simple build. It's on like the flatter side of things, but it's quite long. And you can see there's lots of little different goods in the boat. I've got the minifigure standing here right now, but I can remove him. And you can see there's just a single jumper piece for him to stand on. But yeah, it looks like he's selling little fruits and vegetables. There's two of these like red ball pieces, which I assume are meant to be tomatoes, as well as two of this part, which is the Wolverine claws in green. Now I believe that recolor is all new for this set, and it actually looks really cool. That's a very fun one to see, and I guess it's just meant to be some sort of plant. But yeah, I don't know, using them as actual Wolverine claws for a minifigure, that'd be pretty cool. I always love when we get stuff like this. I think it's really neat. And then we have a leaf with a yellow tile on it. And then finally in the last bin, we have some red and yellow tooth pieces, which I assume are meant to be peppers red peppers and yellow peppers, and I believe they used that part as peppers before, and I actually think it works surprisingly well. But then at the back of the set, behind where the boat was, you can see there's a little market stall, and on the stickered sign piece, it says the words pet food in yellow, and then the orange text is the letter C, B, and B. Obviously, pet food is clear, this is food you could buy for your pets, but the C, B, and B, I'm not sure on that one. Despite being quite small, the market stand does use some pretty cool parts, such as the shield pieces on the sides, you can see they have little studs on them, and they're these more rectangular rounded shields that I don't see LEGO use all too often. The actual food at the stand, you you can see there's an orange leaf with a flower on it, two rounded like dome pieces, I assume those are maybe meant to be like bell peppers, but the really interesting one is over here on the side, you can see there's this little box, it's got the letter K written on it in jargon, and you can see on the other side there's the recycling symbol as well as the kind of things you typically see on a cardboard box, but the interesting part is what's actually in the box, because yeah, there was two more of those lime green frogs that I mentioned, and no, the one being upside down is not an accident, that's how they say to put them in the set, so I suppose dragons eat frogs, and that's why they're selling them at the pet food stand. I feel kind of bad for the frogs, but that's pretty funny just have frogs in a cardboard box right here. I have to say, I do like that a lot. Then there's this big pillar beside the stand, and it's actually got two movie posters on it, one on each side, and these are both references to classic Lego themes. The first one here is Monster Fighters. It says the words Monster Fighters in jargon, and you can see there's an image of two of the main characters, the Lego haunted house set in the background, one of the, like, collectible rocks in the Monster Fighters theme, and actually moving it, you can see a little bit closer. But there's two of the bad guys at the top, too, a little ghost floating around, the giant moon in the back. This is really cool. If you guys have seen the Ninjago City sets before, they love referencing Lego's history, but I love this, because, like, this fits in the Ninjago universe, but it just seems like in the Ninjago universe, Monster Fighters is a movie. That's genuinely so much fun. And you can see that's a stickered piece on this trans-purple window, and they use quite a few of these in the set, actually. And then taking a look at the pillar from the other side, you can see there's another one of these posters, and this one just has some classic Lego Pirates imagery. You can see there's a parrot at the top, and the text on it says the Tale of Brickbeard. I'm sure this is a very specific set they're referencing down here, too. These guys are a bit before my time. Monster Fighters was the thing that came out when I was a kid, but still cool to see yet another thing referenced here. And then from the front, you can see this pillar is covered in lots of different vines and flowers. These flowers are actually the same ones that Jay was holding in the Ninjago City Gardens, so maybe that implies Jay got that flower from here, he picked it for Nia, that's actually kind of cute. But then the rest of the center area is just mostly big open space to pose minifigures, which honestly I love. Because the previous Ninjago City sets, they've been great, but they've all been very packed. So while you can put figures all throughout, we didn't have like one central location just to fill with minifigures. But no, even though the actual markets are rather small, like there is the shops to the side, but in terms of shops in the center area, it really is 
the boat and the stand at the back, as well as this little one right here, which we'll look at in a moment. I don't know, you could fill this with minifigures and make it bustling like an actual marketplace. I think that's actually so much fun. You could really use the set as your one and only Ninjago display piece, just fill it with all the Ninjago minifigures you could think of, because yeah, this set does not come with nearly enough to fill this. And this isn't even all the figure space in the set, there's a lot more above too. So yeah, now let's move on, and let's move to this little shop in the corner. Now this might be one of my favorite builds in the set, just because I think it looks great from all angles. In the instructions, this one is called Camille's Shop, which like, of course, Camille comes in the set, but we really haven't seen Camille in the show in forever. Like, I don't believe we've seen her since season four, so I guess she's running a shop now. No clue if that's going to be canon or if that's just something they made up for this set. But yeah, it just seems like it's meant to be a fairly generic general store. The sign on the front says 24-7, and then that text in the center is just the word store. But it's right here where we see one of my favorite building techniques in this entire set. So you can see there's this little mailbox on the side of the building, and do you recognize what piece that mailbox actually is? Because that is one part built into a wall. There's actually a little bit of mail right there, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But yeah, I'm trying to get my camera in close so you can get a better view. It's just got a sticker on it with an envelope and the word post, and the mailbox is solid on one side, but there's that hole on the other. And that's because this is actually a Lego Minecraft mob head piece, the kind of head they use for cows and pigs. Specifically, I guess this would be an unprinted cow head piece because it's in black. But yeah, this is the Minecraft mob head turned on its side. That piece has been around since 2014, and I don't believe it's really ever been used anywhere except for Lego Minecraft. But man, this is such a creative use of that part. The fact that they used that hole in the bottom to be a mail slot, genuinely so cool. I love seeing that, and it looks great. And then the piece of mail that was in there was another one of my favorite parts of the set. This is a sticker tile piece, and this is Zane's character card from 2011 in Jayo, though obviously scaled down to be minifigure scale, and that is so cool to see. Starting in like 2015, LEGO started doing this where they included like classic 2011 Ninjago cards as like minifigure accessories and sets, but then they kind of stopped doing it. I haven't seen them in a while. I don't think I've seen one since the Ninjago City Gardens, and I kind of miss them because I always thought they were so cool. But yeah, it looks like they're back to them with this set because you get this one card, the classic Zane character card. For comparison, just because I have it with me, here's a look at the actual Zane character card from 2011. And yeah, obviously it was simplified when it was downscaled, but you can see they translate the art over pretty perfectly. Makes me so happy to get this, and I hope they continue to make these, because they're just such a fun collectible, especially for longtime fans of Ninjago. Anyway, there's also some foliage growing on the side of the building. I like the sort of mosaic design for the windows, and this roof design's pretty cool too, using like the candlestick pieces. Turning around to the back, you can see there's more foliage, as well as a back entrance right here, and there's a tiny little bit of a dock above the water. There's also a ladder right here to get to the upper floor. This is a completely separate building which we'll take a look at in a little bit because this is access from the top so we'll take a look at it when I take off the upper level. Now if we want to get access into this part of the build, it doesn't slide out like the buildings we looked at before. Instead one of the walls just pops off and that gives you a bit of a look inside. You can see that there's just lots of different stuff all over here. There's a selection of different goods on the wall that are just random different colored bricks. You can see there's that minion hair piece again though this time in teal. I forget if that's a new recolor for this set. It might have come from Lego Friends I want to say. But regardless, pretty cool to get. On the back wall there's like these three colored boxes, red, gold, and teal. On the wall, there's another illustration of a tree, and this once again says the word art in the corner. And then on the inside of the wall that was removed, you can see there's yet another piece of art, which once again says the word art. And you can see it's got an illustration of like this dragon flying over the land, and like there's maybe a storm in the background. That's very pretty, actually. It might be my favorite one in this set. And then there's one more little thing on this counter right here, and this is one of two of these in this set. But here we have a new exclusive micro figure of Cora Cole. Now, Cole and Jay don't come as many figures in this set, instead, we get them in this version. And honestly, I kind of prefer this, because this is just such a fun collectible. You can use this as a small version of Cole, or you can use it as like a Cole action figure. But yeah, you can see they translate his core torso print into this tiny little form, and I think that's so impressive. It's super cute. And you actually get an extra of this piece in the set too, because it's so small. You get two, one to keep in the set and one for your own collection. That's really neat. I love that so much. And yeah, it's just being sold on the counter in Camille's shop. But anyway, that is it for that shop, so now we can close it back up by sliding the wall back in like this. But here on the side of the shop, we have probably what is my favorite reference to something that's not Ninjago in the entire set. So this is a missing post like you typically see for people's pets. Except it's not for a very common pet, it's for a goat. That text up there is of course the word missing in Ninjargon. And if you're like a casual fan of Lego, or you're only a fan of Ninjago and not other Lego themes, you might not know what exactly this is referencing. But the Lego goat piece of this piece right here only came in one set in like 2010 or 2011 I want to say. And I guess a lot of people want the goat piece for just like custom farms and whatnot. But the goat was never re-released after that fact, so now he's worth a ton on the aftermarket. Last time I checked it, the game was like 100 or 200 dollars just for the one goat piece. So it's a pretty common joke that people like really want the goat piece to be re-released because it's so expensive the aftermarket and I think it's hilarious that Lego referenced that in this set because that's just such a niche thing to reference that's not just like a piece of Lego's history that's very much a Lego community joke and I think it's so much fun that it was immortalized here really hope we get that goat piece one day but for the time being I'll take this the next area is the landing spot for the cable car in the set, but we'll also take a close look at that when we look at the cable car. And then next we have one more little like sales stall. There's a table right here with a teapot and a little cup, as well as these two little boxes. 
The little food boxes on the table are actually all new exclusive printed pieces for this set. Yes, they are printed. They're not stickers, unlike most of the designs in this set. And they've got the letters T, E, and A on them, of course, which spells T. And those sort of just wrap around. It says it twice in each box. And it's just got a nice little golden design. Honestly, a fun accessory to get. I hope they come in more sets. It would be neat if this just became a common Ninjago accessory, similar to like Pigs, Noodles, and Monkey Kid. And then there's a sign behind it. And in Ninjago, it says the word Steeper Wisdom. That's, of course, a reference to Sensei Wu's tea shop from Season 5 of Ninjago, which was called Steep Wisdom. So I guess this is the upgrade. Now, Wu himself does not come in this set, so I'm not sure who's running this stand. But yeah, it seems like someone's trying to one-up Wu. And then finally, for the ground floor of this set, you have this ramp that leads up into the cable car, and that's how you can actually get a minifigure in. There's another sticker piece on the wall right here. And it's got a picture of the Temple of Celebrations on it, which was the employee-exclusive Lego set for 2021, I want to say. And on it, there's some text. In the top corner, it says the word play, P-L-A-Y. I assume that's a reference to the origin of the word Lego, which I believe is Danish for play well. And then at the bottom, in jargon, it just says the words temple and celebrations. They got rid of the of here. <laughs> but yeah, that makes sense. Now you can see this area right here is a ramp, it's not stairs. When every other part of every other Ninjago City has been stairs, they've not really had ramps before. And that is for a very specific reason, which is pretty cool actually. So you'll see there's ramps in quite a few different places in this set. And that's because Cyrus Borg, for the first time ever, comes in this set. And Cyrus Borg's a character in the wheelchair, so instead of just throwing him in the set and calling it a day, they kind of designed the set around him by making a lot of the build wheelchair accessible, which honestly is so cool, that's such a great idea. And it's really nice to see a single minifigure influence the build so much. But yeah, you can see the point of the ramp is that Cyrus Borg can up there and we'll see a few more later on too i like this pipe coming out of the ground right here too which uses just the fire piece and translate blue to be like water flowing out that looks pretty cool this uses like candle pieces in the middle of that there i love the parts used for these giant red pillars and while they are connected very loosely so it's very easy for them to spin they do look quite good and then here we have this black roof section which uses like these large door pieces for the roof which i do think look good however there is one pretty big issue with this section so i'll pause like this for a moment i don't know if you guys see it but notice how far those extend out that extends out a bit further than the other upper level by like a little bit less than a stud. But that means that I might actually get in the way of connecting to the other sets because this would get into their space. That's kind of disappointing to see. Probably not too difficult to customize and fix if you wanted to, but yeah, I wish they'd taken that into consideration. I'll explore that more in my video combining all four sets though. For now, let's move on to the next part of the build. If we go to the right side of the build, above the ramp, there's a little stickered gold piece. It looks kind of similar to the emblem for Ninjago's 10th anniversary. And well, it says the words Ninjago City Markets. I guess it's just a sign to say, hey, you're entering the markets, which is actually kind of cool. I kind I wish the other sets had done that. Maybe going forward, all future Ninjago City sets will do something similar, though. I do like that. Because now we come to the upper level. However, I'm not actually going to talk about the upper level just yet, because we have to look at the interior of all the parts that we skipped. So to do that, the upper level can actually come off, similar to the previous Ninjago City sets. But this is probably actually my least favorite part of the set, because it's all one big piece. And as such, it's pretty easy to take it off. But when connecting back on, it can be a little bit finicky, because you have to align exactly correct if any little bits off that won't connect on properly. So I kind of wish it was split into smaller sections. I don't even know how to get all this on camera. <laughs> I guess we'll just go wide angle lens like this. But yeah, you gotta lift all of this up at once. And it's kind of inconvenient, but there you go. So now with the upper level removed, we get a better look at some of the interiors that we didn't see before. First, here's the room above the blacksmith shop. I assume this is meant to be Kai's apartment. There's a little bed on the ground for a minifigure to lie on, and that can also be opened up from underneath. That's where the ladder is from the blacksmith shop to get up here. There's some shelves in here which are populated with different things. A sticker clock piece on the wall, and the hands of the clock are actually a dragon. There's like a head, a tail, and two wings, which is super cute. I love that, a Ninjago themed clock. And then on the desk right here, we have yet another one of the card pieces, as well as a little quill, I guess, for Kai to write with. There's a look at that card piece up a little bit closer, and you can see it's very similar to Zane's. It's the character card for 2011 Kai. The difference is this is a golden version of the card, while Zane's was the normal version of the card. And I believe the golden version did exist back in 2011, but was only available like in promotional offers. I don't think it came in any normal sets. Still though, once again, a very cool reference. I'm happy to see it. And for reference, here's the original 2011 Kai card compared to this one. You can see obviously I don't have the gold version, but Kai's actual pose is exactly the same, as well as the info on like what elements he has down here. As I said before, I love these collectibles. Kai's apartment also has the store, which which leads to the outside, which of course you can swing open. And here you can see he's got a little table where he's got some sushi and some soy sauce. But other than that, it's basically just a big balcony for him to stand. And then the other building we have to look at is the one above Camille shop. It's got a cute exterior. I love the window blinds and the little plant pot right here with a bow on it. And then of course there's a door to open it up. However, the inside of here is very cramped. This is meant to be Aaron and Sora's apartment, which I'd like to see. I like the idea of having the apartment for the main new characters of this new show. However, they hardly have any room. Like, look at this. There's two studs between the door and their beds. And yeah, their beds are basically all that's in here. You can see Sora's beds on top. It's got a sticker with her cat logo and her name on it. That's in there very loosely, so it's easy to remove. 
so that way we can see what's under it. And you can see underneath it is Aaron's bed. It's got a very similar design to his torso, and it's just got the letter A in that orange dragon. There's some posters on the walls. We have one of Lloyd's legendary dragon from Core, and it has the letter L underneath it. And then the other is blueprints for Sora's mech. But yeah, there really is not much room in the apartment. I kind of wish it was just a little bit bigger because like there's all this open floor space around the apartment above Camille's shop. Kind of wish they extended it out a bit to maybe just have a little more room to pose figures. Because yeah, you're not fitting anyone in there. Let's see if I try to stand Aaron in. Like yeah, I could barely get him to fit, but that is not comfortable at all. So I'm happy this is here, but I definitely wish it was bigger. Probably wouldn't be too difficult to customize if you wanted to extend this out a bit, but in its base form, I have to say I'm a little bit let down by this one part of the set. Anyway, now I think it's time to bring back the upper level of the build. As I mentioned, this thing's annoying to get back on because you have to position it exactly correctly and it's just so big. So I don't think I'll be able to do this accurately on camera, so I'm going to cut for a moment here. Okay, there we go. There it is all back together. Now you can still see there is still a few parts missing, and that's because these parts are also removable, even though they don't really need to be. But yeah, Laffy's Karaoke Club slides in right here. And then the Borg sword could be reattached around the back. But now we are at the upper levels and I can continue the review. I think I'm actually going to move to the highest level now. I know I'm kind of jumping around a bit, but it'd just be easier to cover everything this way. And in the jargon this says Sushimis. There's a tiny little restaurant right here as well as a giant porta potty. On top of the restaurant is this octopus build and I think it's actually really creative the way it's done. So its headpiece right here is actually from like the Iron Man buildable figure from Marvel, or I guess all the buildable figures, right? Spider-Man uses it too. But of course it's unprinted here and I think it actually works really well as like a squid head. And then it's got these two printed eyepieces, which are pretty common and then two tentacles coming out one of them holds chopsticks at the end and the other holds a frying pan and what they did for the frying pan is actually pretty cool this is the helmet for some of the villains from the new ninjago dragons rising wave right if you watch my reviews of those sets you may recognize this helmet but they just turned it on its side to make it a frying pan and yeah it works pretty perfectly it almost feels like it was designed for this which it might have been then on the side of the building there's a menu and it of course says the word menu and has a list of prices there's a window right here which can open up and when you have a minifigure inside they can take orders as for where the minifigure should enter there's a door around the front and then taking a look inside there's lots of windows all over two little pieces of sushi there there's also a golden frying pan on the wall a couple of different sauces as well as what looks like an oven around that though there's just a bit of room to post figures there's no like seating or anything for characters to actually eat their food you can see source just walking around with it but then behind that there's the bathroom and this is the most controversial part of this set i have to say it is very funny but it's also kind of disgusting so if you open the door up you can see there's a little toilet built inside there's toilet paper on the side of the wall little sink at the front however there is this little toilet flusher handle and you can see it's toilet looks a bit full right now. So if I go in here and I push the flusher down, the toilet will actually empty, and it'll actually empty out into this pillar that we looked at before that has like the movie posters on it. So let me share that in a wide view. Oh, only one came out that time. But yeah, that's a really elaborate play feature because the parts run all throughout the build. And it's honestly really impressed with the way it's done, the way they get it all the way to here. However, it's also a disgusting play feature. The idea that the Ninjago City rivers are filled with poop. I, I don't know if I like that because Ninjago City is so pretty. <laughs> Why would they do that? It's definitely a silly play feature though, and I do like it. It's just a little bit gross. Anyway, yeah, that is the bathroom play feature. But now if we come out from behind the buildings and move down these stairs, we'll get back down to the center level of the city. There's a few more references is hidden back here though. You can see on the side of the toilet there's this logo that has a black trident on this red circle. This is actually a reference to Lego Atlantis, which is another theme that I grew up with, so that's cool to see. But then down at the bottom of the stairs, you have this little crate, and it's got a few different things on it. There's a little flower, a flame piece at the back, and then a J micro figure, which once again, similar to the Cole micro figure. This is a micro figure version of Jay's Corsu, and yeah, I think this looks really good too. He does use gold in place of his bright yellow here, which is kind of interesting. It's not as much of a one-to-one -one translation as Cole's was, but I still think it looks great, and I hope we get these for the other ninja in the future, because yeah, they're really neat. And just like Cole, you do get two of this guy in this set, one to put right here, and then one just extra. Then we have another poster right next to that, and oh man, this font's gonna be a little hard to read. But you can see we've got two mechs here. There's like a bone mech and then we have Sora's mech. But I believe it says the words mech master. So maybe that's a tournament we see Sora competing in in the show. Because as I'll be recording this, the show hasn't aired yet, but we have seen trailers. So yeah, mech master, that's what's going on there. And now as we turn this corner, we're getting to Laffy's Karaoke Club. However, we have yet another advertisement right here. This one has a picture of Jacob, the master of sound. And the text on it says new album out now. And actually, wait, there's a few more things by the toilet before we move on. Obviously, that's a picture of Jay's Titan mech from Core earlier this year. And the text on it says, Rebuild Soon. I wonder if that's a reference to anything else, though. Is it a pop culture thing? Like, is that a poster for something? Or is that a reference to something in the new season? Or am I overthinking this? 
I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments. But yeah, rebuild soon. There's also the LEGO Racers Rocket Racer logo at the top right there. Okay, now we can start moving a little bit closer to Laffy's Karaoke Club. You can see a bit of the exterior of it here, and the windows use like these large round pieces and trans purple, and I think that gives a super cool look, especially for a nightclub. There's also a little bridge to get over to the entrance here, because that goes over top of the cable for the cable car. Then we have a sign on the side of the building, which unsurprisingly says the words Laffy's Karaoke Club, and you can see there's a few different plants beneath it, and again it uses more of those Wolverine Claw pieces in that green color, which as I mentioned, it's nice to get so many of those. However, we have lots more little references before we move inside, because you can see now we are at the part of the set that has all the advertisements, and these are in all the Ninjago City sets, and all of them have lots of different references to both Ninjago and Lego's history. So starting with the one on the very left, once again, that's another one that just says the word art, and then that text at the top says the word C, S-E-A, and you can see the art's just a picture of the ocean, similar to what we see on some of Nia's outfits. And then this advertisement right here seems to be for the Ninjago City Gardens, because it's just the top floor from that set. Okay, this is actually all part of the same ad. So it said the word art, then it had a picture of the Ninjago City Gardens. And what these ones say is Museum of History. And of course, we know that set came with the Ninjago Museum of History. So that's what that's advertising here. Then around front, this one right here is a picture of an iguana, and it says the word zoo on it. Now, we've never gotten a zoo in a Ninjago City set before. I wonder if that could potentially be a future Ninjago City set. Maybe they're teasing that here. I doubt it. I don't know how they'd include a zoo in a Ninjago City set, but that'd be really cool if they managed to. That would actually be really awesome getting all the different like Ninjago animals. And then this adds for NGTV News, except it just says NG News. I guess they couldn't fit the whole thing. And then this final advertisement, I can't say exactly what this is referencing. It's like this blue star with the yellow around it. Something makes me want to say Lego Friends, but I can't find the exact thing online. So if anybody knows exactly what that is, let me know in the comments. But I'm sure it's a reference to something from Lego. But now finally, we're outside the front of Laffy's Karaoke Club. It is the biggest single building in the set, and it's probably my favorite too. It looks so good. It was an iconic part of Sun's Garden, and I never expected to get it in a set. And I mean, I know it's a karaoke club, but it's essentially just a bar, so I never expected to get a Lego bar in a set. But you know what? We got it, and I can't complain, because it looks awesome. So you can see there's the double doors at the front, which can open up. The set uses these long, trans purple 2 by one pieces at the front too, and you can see there's tiles placed inside of them to give it a bit of a design. They did that in the first Ninjago City as well, though in a very different context, and both of them work absolutely perfectly. But now I'm going to take this top level off so we can see the side a little bit better. And here's a look at the interior. You can see there's actually quite a bit of room in here. Lots of different stuff going on. Starting in the front here, you can see there's a pool table build, and this is actually a working pool table. You can see there's pool cues on the walls, and these studs in here are meant to represent the balls. But yeah, you can see there's actually little holes around the sides of the table, so if you want to have one of your characters hidden in the hole, you can. And you can actually have your minifigures playing pool, which is super cool. Very creative the way they did that. It looks great. For a downscale pool table, they did such a fantastic job. There's also a little jukebox in the corner. Corner. It uses a hot dog piece of gold, which Lego always likes using those hot dog pieces in the weirdest spots, but honestly that works perfectly for a jukebox. Behind the pool table, there's these giant purple windows, and there's also a sticker dartboard on the wall. And that Ninjago text on the side says Dareth on one side and Tom on the other. Obviously, we know who Dareth is, but I'm not sure who Tom is. For the back of the karaoke club, there's like this photograph of Dareth with this other guy who I don't recognize, so maybe that's Tom? Maybe this is a reference to something I'm just not recognizing, but yeah, I have no clue who Tom is in the context of any of this. Also, sorry, completely unrelated to anything we're talking about right now, but CB&B, that's Creatures, Beasts, and Beyond. That's something Cole references in Season 1 in Ninjago that just hit me. That is a huge threat throwback, but actually really cool to see that referenced here. Very nice, Lego. Anyway, back to Laffy, as you can see, here's the little counter right here. You can obviously have Darrow stand behind that. You've got some glasses on the wall, a little party hat, and there's some gem pieces at the very bottom and trans clear, I guess, to represent smaller glasses at the very bottom. Then there's just a ton of room to post figures, and then at the very back, you have this little stage back here. There's a microphone, and you could stand figures up and have them sing, because of course, this is a stage where they could do karaoke, and that's what that sticker in the back says, too, is the word karaoke. Yeah, this building is just huge, and it has absolutely everything you can need. It just feels so full of life and straight out of the show. I really love this one. Easily the best build in the set, in my opinion. Great for Ninjago fans and just great for LEGO fans in general. If you're one of those people who buys the Ninjago City sets because they're good sets, but you don't care about Ninjago, this is basically just a build of a bar, which is pretty darn cool for a LEGO set. But now exiting the karaoke club and then coming back around the bridge, we have this larger bridge at the back right here, which gets us to the other side of the markets. You can see this is bordered by like these trans green garage door pieces, which is very different. I kind of would have preferred if they had more of the ads here just because I think those are very fun. On. But I think this is a fine alternative. There's also this giant red shrine structure in the middle, and this is just classic Ninjago imagery. We've gotten builds very similar to this in many sets, so it's cool to see incorporated into a Ninjago city. We've got another stickered part right here out in front of the Borg store, and you can see it says the word map at the top, and then of course it's got a map of the city. I assume the red's meant to be a UR here. And then we get to the actual Borg store, which is super neat. I love that we got this building here. Again, another classic thing from Ninjago that's so cool to finally get in physical form. You can see, of course, there's the iconic Cyrus Borg logo at the front. I also love 
love these giant rounded lime green pieces. I'm not sure if those are new. I personally don't recognize them from anything. But yeah, they're used on both floors as like framing for these giant windows. And I think they work pretty well for it. The upper levels of the Borg store can be removed so you can get better access into the first floor. And here's what the interior looks like. It's mostly just floor space, but you have a few products on the wall. You can see there's standard printed Lego phone pieces on the bottom. And then just translate blue tiles above that. And then finally on the very top level, there's some stickered parts. And these look like they're probably meant to be boxes for the Borg phone. Because yeah, it's like a smaller phone on that sticker. Not sure the difference between these two because neither of them are explicitly Cyrus Borg branded, but I do like that there is two different options. Another way to get easy access into this level is you can just remove this wall right here, very similar to what you could do with Camille's shop. But then around the very back of this store, there's this door that can open and it leads up to this platform right here. So then if we reconnect the upper level above it, you can see this actually ties into the whole wheelchair accessibility thing I was talking about before, because of course the floor above this is Cyrus Borg's office, so how's he or in fact anyone going to get up there? Well that's where this comes in, this is meant to be a little elevator, you can see there's a sticker piece with some buttons on it, and you simply just have to lift it up and take it to where you want to go. This piece on the side can sort of lock it in place, and then when you're ready for it to drop, just go like this. And that of course brings you to Borg's office, which you can open the door right here. Or if you want easy access inside, you can remove this wall. And looking inside, you can see there's a lamp on the desk. This uses a hot dog piece in gray. As I mentioned, they love those hot dog pieces. Then there's the standard Lego printed keyboard piece. And then finally, he's got a stickered computer screen, which has some text and in jargon. And I'm actually having a bit of trouble deciphering that text because it's so small. Those bottom two letters are definitely T, but the other ones I'm a bit more lost on. Same thing with this graphic on the side. So yeah, if anyone has any ideas, please let me know in the comments. I can't really figure it out myself though. And then finally you can see the Borg store is topped off with all these different types of rounded pieces. I like the color combination of the lime green and the teal. The two go together well. And if we ever do get like a Borg tower in the future, it helps keep this building very different from it. So yeah, I quite like this one. Borg store was a great idea to include in a Ninjago City set, and I think they did a fantastic job with it. Alright, and we're almost done with the build of this set. We just have one major section left. This is of course the giant cable car, and this is the station where it starts from. Before we get to that though, I want to take a look at the remaining ads we have here. First we have this little poster that was put up right next to the monorail, and you can see this is pictures of the bone villains from Core, but they're just playing drums and guitar, and the text when it says world tour, so I guess in the context of this set, the villains from Core are just musicians, which is honestly really funny. That's a cool way to incorporate them into the main Ninjago world. Then we have an ad for what looks like some sort of cleaning product, because it's just got a picture of soap with eyes, and the text says so clean. Then this one's actually really cool, you can see it's got like clouds in the background, and the text says see Shintaro, so I guess it's a tourism advertisement for Shintaro. Then this one's really easy for me, this is a reference to LEGO Mindstorms that says NXT 2.0, though interestingly that doesn't look like the NXT 2.0, the NXT 2.0 is white, the yellow I believe was NXT 1.0, so I don't know if that was on purpose, but yeah NXT was like the brand of LEGO Mindstorms back in the early to late 2000s. I loved them as a kid so it's cool to see that referenced here. Then this one right next to it is an advertisement for Ice Planet, which was the ice cream shop from the Ninjago City Gardens, and then what I believe are the the final two in the set, or I guess not the final two, but the final two for now, is we have yet another advertiser for Steeper Wisdom. This was a little tea shop we saw down in the center area. And then this is advertising a little pet shop with this red dog who's holding a bone. And you know what? I thought that was a reference to the Lego Duplo mascot, but I'm looking back and I guess the Duplo mascot's a rabbit, not a dog. But this guy still looks very familiar to me. I just can't put my finger on what exactly he's meant to be. So if anyone knows, let me know in the comments. But anyway, now coming down below those advertisements, I guess I haven't pointed these out yet, but there's these little blue lanterns in this set, and they match the ones from the Ninjago City Market. In the first two Ninjago City sets, they were neon orange, but I guess for the newer ones, they're using this light blue instead. It's a cool way to differentiate them, and I do like it. I wonder if they're going to mix it up for the next one or not, assuming there will be a next one. We also have this sticker disc piece right here, and it says the word turn, and it's got two arrows pointing downwards, and that has to do with one of the transformation features, which I'm about to show you. Because, of course, if you want your minifigures to get onto the cable car, they have to enter from the sides right here. You can see on one side there's stairs, but as I mentioned, this set is designed to be wheelchair accessible. So on the other side, there's a little elevator platform. So when I spin that disc that we just looked at that actually moves the elevator platform up, and you can see it's the perfect size platform to fit Cyrus Borg's wheelchair, so that way he can enter and exit the cable car easily. The cable car docking station is actually very beautiful. The dark brown and white is just a great color combination, I like these little flower pots out front. They also have this really elegant cherry blossom tree coming out the top. Now interestingly, that's very similar to the cherry blossom tree in the first Ninjago City set, the one for the Lego Ninjago movie, and if you attach that set on the left side right here, it almost might look like those two trees are meant to be one. I'll definitely try that in my video where I can bind the sets, because yeah, I wonder if that was intentional. I wonder if they want those two to go together right there. Out the front of the cable car, there's this little piece of paper right here, and it says the words open and close. I guess it just indicates the times when the cable car is working. There's a little screen out in front of where the cable car operates too. It's got the Cyrus Borg logo on it, so I guess we can assume Cyrus Borg built this. And in in jargon, it says now open. And to operate the cable car, there's two things you have to do. First, there's the single gear at the back you could spin, and that takes the pathway with the green and white advertisements on them, and simply just moves them up and out of the way. And then to move the cable car, you spin this piece right here, and it'll slowly move down. And you can see you could very slowly take it from one side to the other.
Now that the cable car itself's been moved out, we can take a look at it up a little bit closer. As you can see it's got the sign on the front, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm having a tough time translating this one. Or actually, nope, sorry, I had this piece on upside down. I thought that was the little face right there, so I had it the other way around. But this makes a bit more sense. I recognize these letters. Right, of course. This says the words cable car, which makes sense. This is a cable car. And that's not a face, that's an image of the cable car hanging off. Okay, that was my issue. That makes a lot more sense. Anyway, yeah, this thing looks good. Very round. You can see it actually opens up inside. And there's quite a lot of room to store figures in there. You could probably fit two or three. There's a 4x4 four four space plus two extra studs on each side. You can see it's held to the cable with this string and this classic, like, a hook piece. And if you're curious how many figure looks actually riding inside, you just plop them in there like that, close it back up around them. Maybe Cyrus Borg wasn't the best example. Turn to the side. Yeah, there we go. Close it back up around them. He unfortunately can't see out, but if you use, like, one of the child minifigures or sit a minifigure down, they might be able to see better. There also is windows on the front of the cable car that you can look out of, and you could see there is yet another advertisement there. The same advertisement's on both sides, and it's got a picture of the Core J micro figure, and it simply just says Ninjago toy, which I suppose, yes, that would definitely be a Ninjago toy. And then finally, here's the landing station for the cable car all the way on the other side of the build. You can see it just flows in there real nicely, and it hits this barrier at the very end when it gets there. Then you can have your minifigure unload at the station we looked at before. Just remove them from the car completely. And then if you want any of your other minifigures to enter, you can have them enter in right here. And then just simply turn the gear the opposite direction, and the cable car will, of course, come back up to the top. And I think that's about it for the build of the Ninjago City Markets, at least for now. I'll talk about it more at the end of this video. For now, though, let's take a look at the 21 minifigures that come in this set, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts on everything. So here are the first three minifigures in this set. We have the Dragons Rising versions of both Nia and Lloyd. These two are new for this wave, but they are not exclusive to this set. They come in a lot of the main wave Dragons Rising sets. However, the third figure that I have here is all new and exclusive to this set, and that is, of course, Detective Zane. Starting with the less interesting figures first, though. I mean, they are so pretty good. Nia, especially, surprisingly, does not come in too many sets this wave. She only comes in the $95 Temple of the Dragon Energy Cores, and then a 4-plus set. So I feel like for a lot of people, this is actually going to be the way they get this figure, which is kind of surprising to say. But yeah, I'm happy that at the very least, she did come in another set, and I think she is a good one to get here. She's probably my favorite of the new Dragons Rising suits. I just love the overall blue color scheme for her. This light blue has always been her secondary color, but she's never really used it as her main color, so that's really nice to see. And then the gunmetal gray as a secondary color works so well. I love the dark red belt too. It sort of calls back to her early days as a ninja. Sort of reminds me of her hands of time suit. And then the new armor pieces that all the ninja use this way, if I think are actually really cool looking. I like how you could fit the swords around the back, similar to the ZX armor back in the day. And then Lloyd looks pretty good too. I like the switch from normal green to bright green, and definitely makes this figure stand out a lot more from previous Lloyd suits. The dark green as a secondary color is always great and it pops a lot more against the bright green. And then he has that lighter green belt, which is probably my least favorite part of the figure, but still certainly not bad. It still works. And then you can see both these figures have these new digital eye faces, sort of similar to what they did in Prime Empire. Though you can see they have a bit of their element represented there, and he has got like these water splashes around her eyes, while Lloyd has these little green energy bursts. And then taking their armor pieces off there, you can see their full face prints, where they just have angry expressions under those digital eyes. And then the torso prints are really good too. I love the dark red undershirt on Nia, it just adds a perfect splash of color. And then Lloyd's is nothing all too special. You can see they have a little bit of their element represented on their suit too. Nia's got these tiny little waves on the buckles on the top, while Lloyd's got these tiny little horns. And then turning them around, you can see their alternate faces where they have all new face prints for this wave. Nia's just got a pretty wide smile, while Lloyd's got a somewhat angry face. Both these I think are pretty great. Would have preferred a different expression for Nia, but I think this is definitely the best happy Nia we've gotten. And Lloyd, while this is somewhat similar to previous angry faces, those faces were never all too common. And this is much better than like his movie generic face print, which came in every single set. So yeah, I like both of these. And then back torso prints are really great too. Love all the metallic printing on Nia. And then the sort of polygonal design around the dragon face and Lloyd suit looks really unique. So yeah, while neither of these are exclusive, they're both pretty good inclusions to get in this set. I'm very happy they're here. But then of course, the real highlight of this batch is Detective Zane, based off his appearance in Prime Empire. And wow, I never expected to actually get these minifigures, but I'm so glad we finally have him. He is so cool. For one, the idea of a grayscale minifigure is always super fun. That's not something we've really seen too much before. We got it in, like, Steamboat Willie. But seeing that for Ninjago is really unique. No leg printing, which is unfortunate, but I think it's fine here. He doesn't really need it. The exciting new part on him is that torso piece where he's got, like, that detective's jacket in all gray. And it looks like he might have a ninja rope hidden underneath it, which is actually a pretty fun touch. He's, of course, got the classic Indiana Jones fedora hat piece in gray, too. And there's, like, his jacket around the back as well. However, in my opinion, the very best part of this figure is actually the all-new face print where you can see he's got a very happy smile. He's got one eyebrow completely raised, and that is so nice to see because Zane was stuck with the same kind of generic face print for the longest time where he was angry, and that really didn't match 
Zane's personality in the show. Like, I like having a angry Zane face, but he doesn't need to be angry all the time. And yeah, I mean, it stinks that this face is exclusive to such an expensive set, but I'm happy we finally have an alternative face for him, because this is a perfect Happy Zane. He's just so full of personality, and it works outside the context of this figure. And it's also a single-sided face, too, because if you turn him around the back, he just has his standard back head print with that, like, robotic design. So you could just put his hairpiece on and use this with a normal suit. It's a great figure all around, both in terms of the variant and just the new parts it introduces. I'm really happy he was included. Here are the next three figures in the set. We have Blacksmith Kai, Urban Aaron, and Urban Sora. Blacksmith Kai is a figure people have been wanting for years, and I have to say, this figure is incredibly disappointing. I can't believe we waited this long for this to be the figure we get. He was an iconic part of the pilots of Ninjago, and then of course he also appeared again in March of the Oni. And it is like a really iconic outfit, so iconic that they brought it back for March of the Oni, and then they just didn't include it in this set. This is just a generic Lego City torso and leg. Or I guess probably not Lego City, but like Lego Creator. Point is, this torso and leg print have been around for forever, and then the face print's not new and the hairpiece isn't new. So yeah, even if you don't get this set, you could probably make this guy from your own collection if you have some leftover parts, because nothing is new about him. It's also just not how Blacksmith Kai looked in the show, which is definitely pretty frustrating, because I feel like this is them saying, yeah, we're never gonna get a real Blacksmith Kai, this is the best you're gonna get. I appreciate them trying at the very least, like I'm happy to get a Blacksmith Kai, but this is about as bad as he possibly could have been. He's got his headband hairpiece too, and then just a standard face print that he's had since the movie, so just nothing new about him at all. The only kind of cool part is his accessory. You can see it is a trans orange katana, so I guess that sword's supposed to be like heated metal from the blacksmith shop, which is a very fun idea, but the sword also does come in a polybag this wave. Now how easy is it to actually find polybags in the wild? Mm, it varies, so you might not be able to get that one. So it is nice to get that part here, but yeah, the rest of this figure is really disappointing. I really don't have much else to say on him. And then Urban Aaron and Urban Sora are weird. So of course, Aaron and Sora are the new ninja for this wave, and they come in their ninja suits in the main wave sets, but then their urban suits are just strangely not that different from their main wave suits. Starting with Aaron, his torso print's exactly the same between his ninja suit and his main wave suit. Now when he's a ninja, his armor does cover up the top of the hoodie so it looks more like a ninja suit, but yeah, this hoodie is just his ninja suit, so that piece is not exclusive to this set. And his hair piece is not new. This is the only Ninjago set it comes in, but I believe it also comes in like a city sets. And then his face print's the same one that he has in the main wave. So the only exclusive part about him is his leg piece. And I do have to say, the leg piece is pretty good. He's got the green belt just like he has in the ninja suit, as well as the letter A in green down here, because he uses the letter A for his symbol, because that's the first letter of his name. However, I don't know, I feel like you'd make a pretty good custom urban Aaron if you just have the normal Aaron minifigure. So while I like this guy, and I'm happy we got him, I wish there was more to him, maybe just a different face print, or an exclusive torso print, because while he's good, he's really not that different from the main wave. There's a full look at his face print though with the hair removed, and I do think the hair piece is a really good part. There's just other ways to get it besides this set. Ooh. There we go. And then Sora's even stranger, because she only has one new part, that's her hairpiece. And then the rest of Urban Sora is exactly the same as Ninja Sora, just again without her armor and hood. She doesn't even get a leg print like Aaron gets, no, it's just that hairpiece. And that hairpiece isn't even accurate to the show. The show hasn't aired yet, but it looks like she has a hairpiece very similar to Nia's headband hairpiece. So if they had recolored that, it wouldn't have been 100% accurate, but it would have been pretty close. But instead, this is Mei's hairpiece of Monkey Kid recolored in Coral, which is a great part, don't get me wrong, I love this new recolor, but it just doesn't really fit Sora. I mean, I guess we'll have to see when the show comes out, maybe she'll have this hairstyle on the show at some point. But yeah, from what we've seen so far, it doesn't look like this is accurate at all, which is weird for this being like your new character and you created like an all new molded part. Why not make it the correct one? I don't know, that's a little bizarre. The standard figure is pretty good though. Coral white and dark blue is a really fun color scheme and then she's got the one printed arm, which is always super nice to see. Her face print too, you can see she's got the pink eyes to show that she's using her powers. And then if you turn around, you can see her alternate face where she's very angry, but this time around she's not using her powers. And then she's got like the metallic gold printing on her face as well. Little like grumpy cat face around the back too. However, funnily enough, I think the best part of this figure is actually this accessory. This is once again an all new printed part. It's a little takeout container. It's got a picture of noodles on it. And in in jargon, it just says enjoy, which that's another piece that I feel like should come in more sets. I feel like that'd be really useful. So yeah, as a whole, three very strange figures. I'm happy to get Urban Aaron and Sora, even if they aren't perfect, but Blacksmith Kai is just a disappointment. I like the sword though. Then here are the next three minifigures in the set. We have Misdemeanor, Hound Dog McBrog, and then Camille. Now this is where they really started going all out with the minifigures. All three of these are fantastic especially Misdemeanor. She's a character I've wanted ever since her first appearance just because I thought she was such a funny concept. First off, Misdemeanor is a hilarious name, but I also thought she had a super cool design with the mohawk and the red goggles. Very much just feels like a campy B-tier villain. And I'm happy we finally got her in minifigure form. She uses gunmetal gray as her main color scheme though with red accents, and she's got like this flame design up her torso, and then you can see she uses like the classic Space Man air tanks out the back, but they have these whip pieces coming out of them, and they connect with these flamethrowers at the front to be her weapons. Love all the metallic printing here too, and yeah, just 
just that fire design running up the jacket looks sick. They truly went all out with this minifigure, which is so impressive for just a random character like this. I kind of wish they put this effort into Blacksmith Kai, but I really can't complain about this one. She's an awesome minifigure. And with the air tank removed, there's a look at her back torso print. You can see she just got some straps around there where the air tank would connect. And of course, there's no alternate face on her because it would peek out the back with the mohawk. Overall, though, this is probably one of the best minifigures in the set. Then we have Houndong Prog, which I'm going to be honest, is not a figure that was like at the top of my list of figures I wanted. Like he was fun and crystallized, but there's other characters from Ninjago's history I would have wanted more than this guy. That being said, he did have a big personality in the show and they captured it pretty well here. His torso print's pretty much a one-to-one -one translation with the brown jacket and like the vest underneath it. And then he's got like the sheriff's badge on a chain. He's got the Anakin hairpiece in dark brown, of course. And then his face print is super cool with the glasses and the mustache and the side runs around the side. Turning around, he does have an alternate phase where he's just very angry. So you can use that if he's like chasing down the ninja. I guess he's a cool new antagonist to have. And he does help expand the Ninjago world. But I feel like if we were going to get an exclusive police minifigure, I would have preferred like the commissioner or something because he is more iconic. Still though, this guy's a great design and it's awesome to see him translated. And then finally, we have one of my most wanted minifigures of all time, Camille. Camille is one of my favorite elemental masters back when Tournament of Elements aired back in 2015 and I've wanted her ever since. And somehow she became the last elemental master we ever got. But finally, she is here. We now have every elemental master made into physical minifigure form. And that just makes me so happy. Eight years later, the collection is finally complete. And the figure itself is pretty good. Now it is inaccurate to the show, which is unfortunate. However, I think there's some issue with licensing when it comes to the designs of the Elemental Masters, because I think the ones that weren't meant to be made into toys were designed by Will Film, and as such, LEGO doesn't have the right to print those pieces, so they have to redesign them a little bit for sets. We saw that with the legacy versions of the Elemental Masters, so Camille here still follows the same design principles, and I think that's fine. Her design is honestly very similar to what we saw in the show. This is just even a little bit more detailed. She's got like all these sparkles all over her now, and her red bits have been swapped out for coral, which honestly I do prefer the red, but the coral looks fine. My biggest issue with her is the face print. I don't think the face print's very good at all. One of her defining features is like the bright red lips in the show, but instead they just gave her this sort of generic Lego City face. Now I do think there is a Lego face that exists that probably works better for her than this one, so I think I will be switching my minifigure to that. I might make a YouTube short about it or something. But the important parts about her are the torso and legs, and while they aren't 100% show accurate, I think it's still very clear who she's supposed to be. Oh, and of course there's also the recolored hair piece, which yeah, that's awesome. This like messy hair and dark purple. So cool to see. I feel like that can make for some fun customs too. Yeah, overall one of my most wanted minifigures of all time. So glad she's finally here. I would say she was probably in my top three most wanted. Now the only ones left are Casual Harumi and Dr. Julian. For me to truly feel like all the important Ninjago minifigures have been covered. Okay, well actually there was one other pretty important Ninjago character that we'd never gotten into Lego form, but he's sitting right here, and that is of course Cyrus Borg. It only took nine years. That's when Cyrus Borg was first introduced and rebooted, but we finally have a Cyrus Borg minifigure. People have been asking for this for years. Every single time a Ninjago City set was rumored, people were saying, oh I hope this one comes with Cyrus Borg. And I'm so happy we finally got him, and yeah, he's basically perfect. I don't know how you can improve him. He uses this wheelchair piece in silver, and it's of course got the handles around the back, and then it uses like these skateboard wheels at the front. But I am gonna remove him from the wheelchair for now, just so you can see the minifigure up a little bit closer. And there you can see his full design. And while it's on the simpler side of things, I mean, yeah, it's perfect. He's got like the black turtleneck. I like how they printed that because it was actually printed on his neck in the show, and obviously they can't do that on an actual minifigure, but they moved it to the torso pretty well. Great jacket, of course, and the one glove. And then turning him around, just basic design for the back of his torso. Pretty standard Lego hairpiece. And then his face print is very interesting because it's actually new. We got a face print in Lego City earlier this year that looked just like Cyrus Borg and I was fully convinced that was going to be the face they used in this set. In fact, I was theorizing like, oh, Cyrus Borg is going to come in this set because that face print exists. And I was right, he did come in the set, but he doesn't use that Lego City face print. This is an all new face print just for this figure. And yeah, while that Lego City face print is really, really close, this one is 100% accurate because he's got these silver glasses instead of the black. His eyebrows are a little bit smaller and he's got little wrinkles around his eyes to show that he's a little bit older. Overall, he is a simple minifigure, but he's an important character and one we've been wanting for years. I'm so happy that LEGO finally took the time to make him. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I completely skipped over Darith right here. And this is another super cool minifigure that I never expected to get. This is Bartender Darith, which we first saw in Sons of Garmadon. And he's got like his white jacket that's unbuttoned with his star necklace in the center. Turning him around, you can see those overalls continue around the back. And then he's just got unprinted legs, but I think that works fine. In terms of accessories, he comes with one of the LEGO cast pieces. Though you can see it's flipped outwards, and that's meant to be a rag to clean the glasses. And then his face print's actually not new nor made for Dareth. This is just a generic yellow face print that LEGO's been using for years. But I remember when this face print came out years ago, everyone was like, wow, that is the perfect Dareth face. And it seems like LEGO finally realized that too, because yeah, this looks like Dareth. Turning him around, he has an alternate face where he's singing too, which that fits him really well. So much better than the face they were using for Dareth, and just such an awesome new variant to get all around. He looks great. And then this final figure here is a strange one. So this is Racer 7 slash Blazy H Speed. Racer 7's with the color on the box, but canonically, as of Crystallize, she's now Blazy, so I'll probably be using this 
the two names interchangeably here. But anyway, yeah, the box refers to this character as Racer 7, however, it's hardly Racer 7. She has a really cool new torso print with a bionicle Tahu on it, and then she's also just got a pretty nice jean print. I'm not sure if that's new, but it's a really good one. Turning around, she's got like this bionicle symbol on her back too. And yeah, I mean, this is to be expected with LEGO, right? They like including references to previous themes in their sets. The first Ninjago City came with a Galador torso. So bionicle torso, that's pretty cool to see. And I like that it's here. I just don't get why it's on Racer 7. Because the only new part about her is the torso, and that's a torso she's never worn in the show. The rest of these pieces are just sort of reused from LEGO City or whatever. And I guess the hair piece is accurate, but yeah, that's really the only part about this that makes this Blaze H speed. So I don't know, this kind of just feels like a half attempt at a minifigure. It worked with Mother Doomsday in the past because him wearing a graphic tee made sense. But Racer 7 in this outfit? I, I don't know, it just doesn't really fit her in my opinion. So I like the torso, I like the leg print. I kind of just wish it was put on a generic civilian instead of Racer 7. Because yeah, that's basically what this is. And then in terms of her accessories, she comes with this unprinted red micro figure, and then this little canister, and that's yet another reference to Bionicle. That's meant to be Tahu, and this is meant to be the container that he comes in. There's a full look her face print, which I guess fits her all right. I don't think it's perfect though. And then turning around, no alternate face, but it's just a generic Lego City face. So overall, these two are amazing minifigures. So happy to get them. And then Blazy slash Racer 7 is a good figure. She's just not the character the box says she's supposed to be. Here are the next three minifigures in the set. And these first two right here are two that I never expected to get. But we have Gail Gossip and Vinny Falson, the two people on the NGTV news team. These two have been characters in Ninjago since the very first season of the show, but we never got them in minifigure form, and honestly, I never expected to. But man, they really went all out here, and I'm so happy to finally have them. Gail just has solid lavender legs, which is perfectly fine, but she has an all-new torso print, which perfectly matches her appearance in the show. This just, like, nice pink jacket. But then the coolest part about her, in my opinion, is that she has an all-new face print. There's a Lego City face that looks very similar to her, and they very easily could have just used that, but no, they gave her an all-new face print here, and it's actually a double-sided face as well. One side, she's happy, and it looks like she's talking into the microphone, but then the other side, she's scared, which is perfect, because she's always reporting on, like, whatever craziness is going on in Ninjago City. Unfortunately, her hairpiece is not show accurate, because I believe the hairpiece she's supposed to use is no longer in production. Luckily, though, the correct hairpiece does exist, you just have to buy it on the aftermarket. It was on an old collectible minifigure. But yeah, the face print and the torso print were the most important things, and I'm so glad she has them. And then Vinny. Vinny is mostly just recycled Lego City parts. Generic hat, generic face, generic pants. But he does have an all-new torso piece for the set, which is straight out of the show. He's got the NG News logo on the back that we saw in one of the advertisements. And on the front of his torso, you can see he's just got a name tag and a few zippers. His smiles may be a little bit wide, but he does have a very generic looking face in the show, so you can very easily swap that out if you wanted to. And then yeah, you saw his accessory is a brick-built camera, which I think works pretty well for him. These two complement each other so well, and it's just so awesome to have them to expand my Ninjago world. It really feels like the designers cared about the older fans with the minifigure selection in these sets. I couldn't be happier with it. And then now finally we get into the generic civilians in the set, starting with this guy, the Sushimi Chef. Plain white legs, there's this face print where he's sweating, I think that's just a generic Lego City face. And then you can see he has the same hat as Vinny, but in red. But he does have an all-new exclusive torso print, and you can see it's an apron with a picture of Sushimi from Prime Empire on it, and it says the word Sushi underneath it in jargon. You can also see his name tag is one of the Prime Empire health bars, which is such a small but very fun touch. And then turning him around, he's got Sushimi's face on the back again. Yeah, this is really cool. He's just a generic civilian and very easily could have just reused LEGO City parts entirely. But no, they created a Ninjago-themed torso for him. I love that. It's super cool. Here are the next three figures in this set. We have a baker, a boat vendor, and a street vendor. And two of the three of these are fairly generic. The baker is very similar to a collectible minifigure we got in the past. Same exact hat hair combo piece. And she's got a little whisk as an accessory, which is super cute. But yeah, it's not a ton to say on her. Very flat, simple torso. She looks good but she is very clearly just a generic civilian. I like her face for though with her happy, like laughing, smiling face on the other side, that's cute. And something kind of weird is my set came with an extra of the hat hair combo piece, which is a really cool part to get a second of, but yeah, I'm not sure why that was included as an extra. Then the boat vendor is way nicer than he has any right being. He wears just like these sand green robes and they have metallic gold printing on them. Very elegant, I feel like you can make really cool customs with that. But then he just has solid sand green legs. And then of course, just like the classic Sensei Wu straw hat. That metallic gold printing continues around the back, looks like it's maybe a little bit of a necklace. Or no, I guess that's just the trim on his robes. But something kind of cool about him is he has a hearing aid, which I don't know, it's a small thing, but it's always nice when that's included in sets. Helps you have slightly more diverse minifigures. And then finally, the street vendor is fine. I feel like that's the most generic of generic torso pieces. Feels kind of out of place in Lego Ninjago. But her face print's really great, just like a smiling old lady. And I like her hair piece as well. And then turning her around, there's the back of the overalls and her alternate face, where she just seems very content. Yeah, so this guy in the center is definitely the most interesting of these three figures, but none of them are bad. All of them are nice inclusions to 
to add to your city. And then here are the final three minifigures in the set. We have the Borg store employee, the T-Bender, and the Dojo Kid. Borg store employee is awesome. I love this minifigure. She is just a generic civilian, but she has an all-new torso print for this set. And you can see it's kind of inspired by the outfits that Apple store employees wear. But of course, it's got Cyrus Borg's logo in the corner. I want to get more of this torso print. Just have an entire army of Cyrus Borg workers. I think that's so cool. It's got his logo around the back as well. And then her little name tag just says hi. Great face print too with little freckles. And I love her hair piece. It's the Monica Rambeau hair piece from Lego Marvel. Removing that though, there's a full look at her face print. And then a look at her alternate face too. Where she's just got a very wide, happy smile. I think it would be so cool if this torso print came in more sets just for like generic civilians. I love when we get like Ninjago themed things that aren't like super overt. And this is perfect in my opinion. I don't know. It's small, but it's a really cool minifigure in my opinion. Then the T-Vendor has got a pretty funny look. This hair piece with that mustache is very goofy looking. But his torso print's actually incredible. He's just got like this white sweater on and it's got a dragon on it and it's blowing smoke out of its mouth. Just beautiful color scheme. And it says the word T around the back. Definitely fits his whole vibe. That's another one that I feel like you make some cool custom characters with that torso. And that face spread though is not new. It's Fred Finley from the Lego Ninjago movie. And then turning it around, there's no alternate face or anything. It's always cool when we get exclusive torso prints for generic characters. But man, this guy could get a new torso print and Blacksmith Kai can't. That's a little bit upsetting. And then Dojo Kid just uses the new core training suit with just like the Lego generic little girl face. And then a fairly good hair piece as well. It says the word ninja around the back and I like the white and red, but I really don't have a ton else to say on this one. It is just a smaller version of the core Dojo Ninja. But hey, I mean, it's nice to have an alternate way to get that torso piece. And when there's 21 figures in the set, I really can't complain about one being a little bit more boring. Whew, and there you go. There is everything for the Ninjago City Markets. I have been working on this set for a while. I was building for probably 8 to 12 hours today and then I filmed for another four and now I gotta go edit this. Man. <laughs> It was a lot, but I have to say, I love this set. Now in terms of, do I recommend it? I think if you like collecting the Ninjago City sets, yeah, this is another good one. I think everyone's agreed from the beginning that the docks has always been Ninjago City's weak point. And now that I have this one built up, yeah, I still think that's true. Docks is the only one that's really not incredible. This fits really well with the other two. Now I think the more interesting question is, if you don't have a Ninjago City set yet, should you get this one instead of the Ninjago City Gardens? And I would say that depends. I think in terms of the build, the Gardens is definitely the better standalone build. It's more built to be standalone because it is that corner piece, well, this feels like it's meant to be the center between the original Ninjago City and the Ninjago City Gardens. Again, I guess we just forget about the docks. I think they forgot about the docks, too. <laughs> so yeah, if you're just looking for a beautiful build to put on a shelf and you don't want both, I would say the Gardens is still probably the better one to pick up. However, I would say this set has the much, much better minifigure selection. So if that's something you care a lot about, this might be the one for you. But yeah, if you have any of the previous Ninjago City sets and you want to expand upon it, this set is gorgeous. They're really improved upon a lot of things with the previous ones, such as making the rooms easier to access. Access. Though I will say, taking off that like upper floor is really annoying in this set. It's kind of annoying in all the sets, but this one is definitely the worst when it comes to that. Which is a little funny considering they tried to improve it with the rooms that slide out and the walls that fall off. But yeah, when you have to take the upper level off, it can be annoying to get it back into place. Still though, that's a very minor thing on an otherwise fantastic set. So all things considered, I would recommend it. $370 is obviously a lot of money, but compared to some other sets in a similar price range, this one's a great value because you get over 6,000 pieces. If you look at what other sets come with 6,000 pieces, they're a lot more expensive. Expensive, and they definitely don't have this kind of minifigure selection. I really love all the minifigures we got. Blacksmith Kai is really the only disappointment, but we got so many other characters that I've been wanting for years, and that so many other Ninjago fans have been wanting for years. So yeah, what else is there to say about this set? It's a really good one, and I think that was pretty proven by this review. But yeah, I think that's about all I have to say for this video. I'm sleepy, I want to get to bed, but first I have to edit this. Of course, everything I said was just my thoughts, so let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and stay tuned because I'll be doing a video combining this set with the other three in Jago City sets very soon. But as for this video, I think that's about all I have to say. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.